Hello and welcome everybody to the latest edition of the Buy Round interview show. For your listeners that are watching on YouTube, don't adjust your screen. Uh, Tyson Frizzell is awake and with us. Uh, joining us on the Buy Round, good friend of mine, former teammate, uh, legend of a bloke. I don't care what anyone says, especially <laughs> Jeremy. Tyson Frizzell, welcome. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks for having me, mate. It's been a, it's been a while. You would have liked to have had you on a little bit earlier, but mm. um, very difficult to pin you down these days, Frizz. Yeah. Very busy man. It has been a while. I don't think we've really ran into each other for maybe a year or plus. Yeah, it's been yeah about a year. Of, yeah. Can't I think maybe, la <laughs> maybe last time would have been at Newcastle <laughs> races. Could, yes, yeah. And Jeremy Lattimore, mm -hmm. the warrior. The warrior. Who was out and about. Um, that was a bit of a... Sleeping holiday for you, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you spent most of the time asleep, but it was good. It, uh, yeah, good for well, you boys to get away. Yeah, well, I'm getting old, mate. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? You, yeah, me yeah, I'm not I'm not the footballer I used to be. I uh, don't need to be like the soul of the party till all hours. You can just... Unlike some know, of us, eh? Hey? Unlike some of us. Yeah. Jerry. It was... <laughs> I, mate, ju just on that, like, yeah. I guess, worlds collide there. Mm -hmm. Like, you've got your Dragons mates and, you, and your new Newcastle mates. And obviously, you, you're top of the pecking order at Newcastle and you know you hang around with the big dogs like Ponga yeah. and he was there at the races and then you've got Jeremy the Pest and it's kind of a bit like I, you know I, yeah. I, I don't know if they want to yeah because I'm, there's there's different different vibes and, and and we know Jeremy gets a bit excited and with, with someone like he kept calling them Pongas all day <laughs> and Caelan was just a bit I usual. think yeah I think he walked into that and thought he wanted to stamp his authority as I'm the big dog here. Mm. I'm one of Tyson's good mates, so mm. I'm going <laughs> to put you on the show and, oh, poor Kalen and I feel the other boys too. I think it was Connor Watson and... Um, Is that one of the Saifiti boys? Yeah, one of the Saifiti yeah. boys that I'm coming out to and um, you know what he's like. He has to be the life of the party and he's centre of, <laughs> center of attention and... <laughs> Uh, I don't think he let those boys talk. All no, night. yeah, no. It was good. It was a good weekend. It was a very good weekend. I, I, it's funny that you get criticised for being away and, and having catching up on some Zeds. Like, well, well, the party continues. I, I don't. I personally don't see the problem. Yeah, with that. well, we we come there to catch up, mm. and I think it was for for two days and. I think we only saw you for probably one full day. The rest you were <laughs> catching I, up on some sleep. Well, I think I got there as well yeah. and went for a nap. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, yeah. In, in your in, in your, your, little, in your granny had, flat, yeah, the granny back room. Flat, yeah. Well, because I'd driven off. I think I'd been out the night before, or maybe Jerry had driven. I was yeah. like, I just I just want to have a, an hour just <laughs> to myself. And Jerry was like popping drinks. It's like, mate, we're we're about to go to yeah. a day session at the races, mm -hmm. and you you're having drinks before we go and. I just don't get it. Yeah, it's it's all right. It's not it's not for everyone. And I'm at that stage now where mm. I've probably got one good day in me, and then mm. um, yeah, I'm starting not to slow the, down. Yeah, starting to slow down. Starting to slow down. Yeah, it catches up with us. Yeah, it's all right, mate. Uh, Newcastle this year. Um, what what did you make of the season, Frizz? It was from the outside looking in. Didn't not the best of starts. Mm -hmm. Came back into contention. KP got injured the game after the Roosters game. I thought you played brilliantly. Um, you lose to the dogs, but then you had to refocus, got back on the winning horse, playing a different style. Ponga comes back, then you go on this run, you make playoffs. Um, you had the great game against the Dolphins. Mm -hmm. Where, 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 what's your sort of assessment of it? Yeah, I guess if you, you look back now and you overlook the whole season, you can... You know, potentially say it's a pass market that we we made the finals from where we started um it's kind of been like that for for a couple of years now where we've been slow starters and been able to try and find the style of footy that kind of suits us i think we thought that we could be the same team that we were last year and we sort of went on a run there at the back end it'll just flow into this season but it wasn't to be and i guess uh, you know looking back now maybe the best thing was, you know, losing KP and not relying on him as much as we probably did in the style of footy that we played and took a lot more ownership on, on us as, as individuals to be able to do our job and um, do, our, do our role. And then off that, KP usually just finds his way in and, and does his magic. But, um, yeah, it was a slow start and 
we thought we knew if we simplified our game and pulled it right back towards the back end of the year, it's, it's usually what wins you the start of the year and you usually wins the big games at the end of the year, that simple kind of footy where you can play high, kick to corners and just put that on repeat. You can look at, you know, weekend's game against Penrith. They weren't, they weren't perfect, but towards the back end of the game, they just put the soul of footy that they play on repeat and it eventually just, just yeah. broke the shark. So, um, yeah, for us, it's, it took us a while, it's a while to get going. And once we had KP back there and um, a few other boys, you know, come back in, it, it sort of, um, you know, worked out for us here in the end. What do you think it is that's, that's missing from the Knights? Obviously, Ponga is, is, is the X factor. Um, but yeah, that said, you've proven you can win without him. Like his first game out injured, I was covering that game against the Dolphins. Mm -hmm. You went up there to Suncorp. Mm -hmm. It looked like you drew a bit of a line in the sand, but obviously Ponga is so important, but does he need a little bit of help in terms of actual genuine game breakers? Like you, you speak about Penrith and you, they put their, their game plan on repeat and they have faith in that, mm -hmm. but then they've got the Cleary, they've got the Yo, they've got the Edwards, they've got the Liam Martins of the world. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that something you're looking for? And they're also consistent. If you look back at... Newcastle's season in particular, the chopping and changing in the halves. Like, personally speaking, I don't know if it was the best mm -hmm. for that group, especially after the, the previous season where you went on that incredible run um, and even got through week one of the finals. Yeah, there's obviously, you can probably look external and try and find um, where we can feel, you know, a bit more X Factor. We always look internal and where we can just, you know, make do with what we got. I think we have a you know, a pretty good side. And like I said, we just need guys to be able to turn up week after week because you know how hard it mm. is and just be able to just do their job. You know, where when we do that, like week after week and not get bored of it, it just becomes second nature. And like I said, the back end of last year where we just, we're not a full, we weren't a t full, fully talented side. We just, we just knew our roles and just the game style that we wanted to play and just, we didn't, we did that back, like, you know, back to back, week after week and it just, we went on a bit of a roll there and we kind of did that towards the back end of this year, but not as well. But um, in saying that, when we're, you know, doing things right within within the club and within the side, KP shines. Yeah. I guess he's the, the pinnacle of, you can say, the Newcastle Knights and what everyone looks up to. But that, that's just him. We know what he can produce and we know a, you know, once in a generation player that, you know, we, we've got in our side and we're going to make the best of it. You know, we're not going to be able to get another guy like him or, you know, all these X-Factor players. We're just going to um, play to our potential and, you know, by us doing that, we unlock him. Yeah. He, he is a, a special player, like, yeah. to, to watch some of the things he does. What, what's, he, what's he like around the, the training ground mm -hmm. and in terms of, like, you, you know, he, he captains the team at times. Yeah. Like, what 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 sort of person is he um, in in the training ground in the, in the build up to these games? Yeah, I think he gets a a bit of a bad rap in that he's a kind of a laid back kind of guy, but I think he just doesn't let things phase him. He he gets publicised a lot for for anything that he does, and you know more recently with him withdrawing from you know the Aussies on making himself available, um, but he's one of the most competitive guys I know and. Um, I'm kind of kind of similar, so we we like to clash in the off season and um, have a, have a bit of fun uh, around that. But he's he's very driven. He knows what he wants, and um, he just doesn't let other things worry him. So if it's yeah, if it's in his way, it's you know if it it doesn't bother. It's, if it's standing in his way, he just won't worry about it. If you know what I mean? If, yeah. It's if it's not you know going to help the team or if there's external things that come, he just it doesn't phase him, which probably he gets that lack of, or he doesn't care. It's not that he doesn't care. It's just not going to let yeah, anything I, deter him from mm. playing well, wanting to win a premiership, wanting to play origin, you know, anything that he does in, in his footy. I, I guess it, on the, people can be criti critical of him not wanting to play rep football, but on the other side of it, it's, he said that he's doing mm -hmm. this ultimately to try and deliver a premiership mm -hmm. to the Knights. Like you as a as a teammate of his at the Knights, that must fill you with like, well, we've got him, he's all in for us here. Like that must be 
a huge boost to the belief within you that Newcastle can do something over the next couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. I think if you know if you had someone of that caliber um, do that within your side and just said, oh, "I'm all in for you guys," we could look back. At, he almost had his career taken away from him a, a couple of years ago, and it's him being probably selfless in saying, "Oh, you know, I potentially owe the Knights," which he doesn't, but that's just him being driven and just want to do everything that he wants to do. And that's him performing well for the Knights and him, you know, potentially, you know, hopefully down the track win a premiership for the Knights. Yeah. So it is great for, for a teammate to, to see someone like that and stand up for what he wants and, you know, I can only applaud him for, you know, because it, it is playing representative, playing for Australia is, was one of the my goals. It's potentially not his, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. It's not up there above a, a premiership and he thinks that by having a, a full preseason under his belt is that a disrupted year he's had disrupted two years that he can potentially help us you know do something yeah. uh, on rep football you've got your first year of international jerseys yourself okay. haven't you wales yep. australia tonga um what's the, the current state of play because obviously uh Tonga will go over and play England uh, in a two-game series. Are you? No, no, they're staying here this year. Oh, this yeah, that sorry, was last Samo, year. Yeah, Samo, Samo, go, yeah, yeah, sorry, my mistake. But Tonga are going to stay here and yeah. be part of the uh, Pacific Championships. Mm -hmm. Are you looking to be a part of that for for Tonga yourself? Or yeah, it was a conversation I've I've just had with Wolfie, um, who's the head coach of, of Tonga, and um, it's something that I've thought about probably through the year and. You know, got to the back end of the year and just thought, you know, I think I've done my time in, you know, rep footy. Of oh yeah, yeah, I've um, I've achieved a lot of things that I've I didn't think I would, you know, ever achieve. You know, I was able to play for, I think three countries. Yeah, it is three countries. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm probably at the back stage of my career where, you know, I need to pick my games wisely and how much footy footy I play if I want to you know, play for a, a few more years too. So I thought I'd, you know, call the quits on, yeah. on the rep footy side of things. I've I know that'd be a big call for for you to make because yeah. you know it, it you, you know how special it can be at yeah. the, the end of the year. Especially when, you know, if you, I always looked at rep footy as a great opportunity. Mm. If things didn't go well at Clubland, yeah. it was a great way to just like have something to look forward to. Mm -hmm at the back end of the year or, you know, you've, you'd lose your playoff game and that's, oh, you know, I've got England coming up and for you, you'd yeah. be, well, you're right in the mixer there with yeah. Tonga against Australia and New Zealand over here. Yeah, and I probably, once the game start going, I'd probably second guess myself and was that the right call, but um, don't really think with my head too much and um, <laughs> usually just go, well, with what's what's inside and uh, as much as how passionate I am to to play international footy I just yeah thought it was was the right yeah. call and what's what's best for me and um you know going forward and um as much as I love it I'm I am going to miss it and um yeah it's it's been good I'm just grateful for what I've been able to do um you know, over the past few years. Do you remember that Wales game when we played against <laughs> each other? <laughs> I do. Yeah. I do. Long time. What year was that? 20, it might have been 20. 209, 210 maybe? Nah, 11. It was 11. Was so, it? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, Four Nations. I think I'd only played it two. Was, a mid, was, it, was it not a mid-season test? Did you not come over for that mid-season? No. Nah, was it, it Four Nations? That it was a, no, no, no. Sorry, it wasn't. A, yes, it was a Four Nations. It was, yeah, us. It was Wales, uh, New Zealand, England and Australia. Mm. And we played you somewhere. Was it at Lee? The first might have been Lee. At Lee Sports. And our, and our yeah. prop got knocked out of the Oh <laughs> yeah. Jordan James. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely yeah. Sparko, yeah. didn't he? And I was just I remember just thinking, what am I doing here? <laughs> like, was that your was that, that the first that was game? My first game, yeah. And Benny Westwood knocked him out <laughs> of the kickoff. <laughs> he did. And I was just going, Oh Lee. Yeah. yeah. Had you played NRL at that stage? I only played two games. So you played two that, NRL yeah. games yeah. and get thrown in yeah. international against like it's, his team was stacked. Yeah, and then you have to play Australia and yeah. New Zealand yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which was, um, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. I was a proper, just a kid. You'd have been, what, like 19? Yeah, I was the youngest in, youngest in the side. Um, I probably would have been the youngest player in that tournament. Yeah. Yeah, just turned 19. 
or yeah, yeah, it was 19, maybe turned 20, but yeah, it was. Um, and, and previous to the the two games I played in NRL, I was only playing 20s, so I hadn't played against men. Oh, so you've gone from 20s, I'd gone from 20s to missed missed yeah, Reggie's, yeah. and then go to yeah, yeah. to gra- first grade. Yeah, because if you think back to when the 20s first started, you'd they'd get the best players from the under 20s and just bring them to first grade. They wouldn't really transition yeah. years through that. Um, New South Wales Cup as they, as they do now, which is probably the right way to go yeah. because at that time when I made my debut, I wasn't ready. Mm. I remember sitting in the sheds just going, what are you doing here? <laughs> like, you know, do a fake an injury? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do I just Mate, say like, oh, I feel sick or something Mate, like that? It's funny that anxiety that yeah. you, like, I, I'm not too dissimilar as a young player just going, oh, shit, do I crash the car on yeah. the way to, to the way to the game? Like, just <laughs> to get me out of this. Almost like the nerves just... Yeah. Horrendous. Yeah, it was, it was um, yeah, funny time. You, you know, people say oh, it was the best day of my life making my debut, but we all mm. have different you know, yeah. journeys, different it, experiences. And at that time, I think it was maybe uh, Paul Gallant had pulled out, so I'd come in probably on the Wednesday. We played on the Saturday. And I remember it was at the back of um, Suncorp there. They had like the mountables at the time because they must have been refurbing Suncorp. And I remember just going in the bathroom and washing my face and just looking in the mirror, just going, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> and yeah, I ended up playing yeah, a game the next week, got got hooked after I think probably about 20 minutes. And then, yeah. yeah, I think I think so. I look back now, I'm like, I shouldn't have come off, come off after 20 minutes. And then, um, yeah, had a full preseason, played a bit of cup and then, yeah, I was, yeah. I was ready after that. <laughs> yeah. Did, did you enjoy that, that international experience yeah. with Wales yeah it was um it was an experience like it was you know one of the best camps I've been a part of I've been a been a part of a couple now and just would you say naive or not knowing what you were going to walk into because you'd never been a part of something like that before culture people different world <laughs> like yeah going. and then just yeah it was yeah um so thankful that I took the opportunity to go and play for him because, um, yeah, it was yeah one of the best tournaments. Mm. J- just on that to to explain to people like the, the family dynamics. Yeah. Um. Like this isn't just a, a tokenistic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've you know a no. second cousin once removed. <laughs> Uncle's dad used to know the owner of a Welsh staffy. That yeah. oh, that made me Welsh. Yeah, here I am. It was legitimate. Like. Yeah. Your dad is born and bred in Wales. In Wales. Yep. And my grandparents and they grew up in Swansea in, in Wales and I think they might have moved over when he was a, a kid of maybe maybe ten or twelve or so, something like that. But um yeah, they all moved to Australia and mum was born and raised in, in Tonga and then she moved over when she was in high school and they both made <laughs> you know, made it to, to Wollongong and yeah, there I came. Yeah. yeah. Um it, it it's funny, I've been to visit your family yeah, home yeah. a couple of times. Like, I think I left with a heap of chop suey. Like, they're yeah. such a, you are such a, a loving family. Yeah. But then just, obviously, like, culture's a, a funny thing. And and I've come from England, living here in Australia, and learned about other cultures. Obviously, spent a lot of time at the Bulldogs, heavy Leban, Lebanese c- culture and community there. But yeah. oh, it, it almost... It almost doesn't look right or, or yeah. sound right with yeah. y- your dad, the, the yeah. Welshman, and your your mum, Tong, and yeah. it's like it, it's almost like a a bit of a double take. It, it and I'm being in Australia yeah, yeah, yeah. in Wollongong. It's a bit yeah. of it's like a it's like United Nations in there. <laughs> um, what, what was it like g- growing up with? What were they, I guess yeah, a, a clash of culture and cultural values um, for the for the most part of it. Yeah, it was it was fine. It obviously dad taking me to footy games. You know, people were like, who's that, who's that guy hanging off you? And <laughs> wouldn't really know who he was. And I said, yeah, that, that's my dad. But dad pretty much moved into our family. Like I've got my mom's uh, the eldest of eight kids, and all their family were all you know pretty much living in Wollongong with all their kids, all my cousins. And dad sort of moved into our our culture. And yeah. You know, his parents were in Queensland at the time and, um, yeah, everyone knew my dad because he was the white guy that was um, <laughs> in, in, a, in a Tongan family yeah. and was, you know, part of everything and he just sort of 
slotted in seamlessly like but from outside looking in, you're like, who's this guy? <laughs> who's this guy hanging out with, with all these, and with all these songs? And still like, and he still has a bit of a Welsh twang as well. Like, not not so not much now. My grandparents do, yeah. but you can probably catch it if you know yeah. if you're from there. But um, yeah, the dynamics were were fine. He just he grew up. He grew up. He's probably been with the our tongue inside more. He's more than his life. So you can say he's he's quarter tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that, that, like I said, you, you speak about the, the importance of culture and, uh, and family as well, mm-hmm. and and your brother Shannon yep. as well. Like, yeah. is uh, an All Blacks representative. Mm-hmm. Um, what was it like growing up in in, in such a, a, a big family? And do you think that helped to contribute to your success as an athlete? I'm not too sure. It's it's funny. Uh, well, is a story I don't think too many people know, but Shannon's uh, my adopted brother, and he he grew up in Tonga. And um, as kids, we would go to Tonga at least once or twice a year, you know, spend school holidays over there and, and live in the village. And um, so he he was born and born and bred in in Tonga. And mum used to live there with him months at a time. She would oh. stay away from Australia and live there to to live with him, trying to. Let, no, long story, but trying to get him to to come to Australia and live with us. So um, he spent all, the, all his um, his life in Tonga, and we'd only get to see each other um, during holidays or during you know Christmas holidays when we were there. And uh, we spent a lot of time together in that sense, but not really a lot of time until yeah. he um, he eventually come to to New Zealand in I think when he was eighteen, nineteen on his own with maybe a priest, I think it was. I'm not too certain on the story. And then from nothing, he pretty much made his own way. And it's funny how it's planned out. He's he's gone from, you know, living in Tonga to be able to move to New Zealand, play footy on his own and then make his way to, to, to play for All Blacks. It's pretty, it's a pretty cool story. Um, yeah. What he's been able to done and, it's probably only since he's moved to New Zealand that we've really been able to connect as, mm. you know, you know, brothers. And now that we're a lot older and got kids, um, we try and find us. It's hard now because he's over in Japan playing, but um, we try and connect as, as much as possible and probably make up for time that we, we didn't spend together as, as kids. It's a pretty special aspect of the, the Tongan culture, that, that yep. connection to, to family and yep. and. Even being at your house, that, that those couple of th- or your, yeah. your your family house, yeah. your family home, mm-hmm. it was just like those people just yeah. like in and, and I, I sort of loved it. It reminded yeah. me of where my dad's from in Cumbria, where it's just revolving door, mm-hmm. like people just in and out, and everyone's saying hello and yeah. hey, take this, oh, I've got this for you. Like it, it's probably something that's not appreciated enough yeah. by other cultures. I think. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Like I didn't. Looking back now, you're just thinking, how was I playing first grade? So, yeah, you would have come to the house where we had two families there. We had a family of two parents, five kids, and then we had me, my, me, my brother, and my, my brother, Zion, my younger brother, and then my two parents. So there was a, it was about eight. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> There's my mousey, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve people like, that were living at our house at you know, sometimes then we got cousins that were staying over and I think it was a house of four or five bedrooms and it's just the way it was. Yeah. You, you, we didn't know any differently yeah. and yeah. Um, we just we just made, made it work mm. and looking back now, you probably, at the time you're like, oh, so hectic, but look back now and th- these are times that have made you the person that you are and just being a part of, you know, two families and just mm. living a life. Like, like I said, I was... My missus walked in, Sammy walked in at the time when we first got together and she was like, what's going on here? Like, I was the only one with my own room and, you know, oh, that's boys, were, boys were like staying in my in my room and sleeping in my room and it was just just the norm, like, yeah, you know. Was, well, I'm, one of, I'm one of seven kids, yeah. so I know what a chaotic house yeah. can be like. And you said there, like, you you made your day. When you think of, like, mm-hmm. all the preparation with the athlete, you got a yeah. perfect sleep, you know, and you're there in this house of what, like 10, 10 12 top, people yeah. Yeah. and you're getting ready to make your debut be, yeah. I get, put it 
but that's if that's all you know, that's all you know. Yeah, it is. And like I said, I didn't. It wasn't until I moved out, I didn't know what a good mattress was. I didn't know what a good pillow was. I didn't know that you had to eat, you know, clean. And if the food was there at the house, and if you didn't eat, you weren't going to eat. You had to find <laughs> your own way to eat. So you either get in <laughs> first, almost or, like a fight. Yeah, yeah like just yeah. It's just you had one big meal at the end of the day. You find your way to eat, and that, that's okay. Like mm. it, people complain about different things, but you only know what you know. Mm. And looking back now, it's kind of a laugh, mm. but it wasn't until I moved out, sort of knew what being professional was. And I, this was like three years into my career too. I was still living at, at home at the Dragons and trying to make, you know, trying to make it. And um, yeah, it wasn't until I, I left home that, you know, Sammy sort of said me, I think you should be doing this because her old man used to, you know, train at uh, Balmain and, and at the, was a trainer at, at South as well. So she kind of knew an idea of what the right mm. thing was to do and he did as well. So every time I went to her house, I was well looked mm. after. So you said that you never complained. Well, you certainly <laughs> changed that. Um, but but I, know, I know what you mean in terms yeah. of like the big meal at the end of the day. I, yeah. I never knew what leftovers were no. like growing up because no. there was never anything left. No. Like mum and dad made an, enough and then it was well, it wasn't enough because there was never yeah, any, yeah. there was never any left over, and it was like, right, okay, we get some bread to finish it off, like to fill you up, basically. Like, it was a bit battle stations. If we had to have dessert, like just all out war for the Vianetta, who who like who got more? Like, yeah. the Equality Act of the Graham household was in <laughs> very strict order and running. Um, just on the when when we'll we'll skip over the Australian part of the representative football, mm -hmm. but obviously coming from such a proud community in Tonga, mm -hmm. when you're representing Tonga, that must yeah. have meant like, like it must have burst your mum's side of the family with nothing but pride. Yeah, um, it was more so for them, I think when I when I chose to, to do that. I wasn't sure if I was gonna play for Tonga at any stage of my career, but um, got the opportunity to do it last year and I'd always had cousins, you know, messaging me like when are you gonna play for Tonga if I run into him and family things are you gonna play for Tonga I'm like oh I don't know I don't know what's gonna what's gonna happen if it's gonna if I'm gonna be able to get the opportunity and um yeah when I did get the opportunity um even though it was away I think it, it did mean a lot for mm. for them and it was great for me to to do that for my family mm. did, what, what were they like when you were playing for Australia against Tonga oh they loved their mum was all for Australia it was kind of oh funny. really yeah yeah so the first time we we played um, Tonga at, uh, at Mount Smart we'd come driving into Mount Smart and there was a lady right at the right at the gate with an Australian flag I think she might have wearing Australian jersey but she had a Tongan and an Australian flag in front of the bus and it was like who's that lady and it was mum <laughs> <laughs> it was mum um, so yeah she's proud Aussie yeah like, she's Tongan but like she knows I guess what Australia's she, yeah. done for us and for our family. So, you know, represent me, represent Australia. Mm. That just, I think it was, it was great to see her being able to be at that at that stadium on that day. Yeah, that the atmosphere Unreal. that the Tongan crowds yeah. created. It's still uh, the World Cup semi final in seventeen. Mm -hmm. Still the best yeah. atmosphere I have ever played in. Beats Wembley. Beats Old Trafford. Mm -hmm beat the World Cup final that we played at, like yeah. it hands down beat absolutely everything I've ever played in. It, it was incredible, mm -hmm. the wave of support by the yeah. people and almost coming out of that, like the respect that I had for the Tongan community after it, yeah. because the game finished in, a lot of people would say controversial circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for feet to, loses the yeah, ball yeah. whitehead yeah. has an involvement no try yeah. game over i was expecting like pitch invasion yeah. but yeah they're, they're just they're like a appreciate yeah. like appreciated what, what the 34 players did yeah usually when you go to uh, big games you probably got one side of fans that are just you know just solely on the opposition team mm. if you're not you're not playing for them and if you if you're there, Tonga's supporting both. You know, as much as they they're supporting um, Australia or, or oh sorry, they're, they're supporting Tonga. They're singing the Australian national anthem. You know, they they're singing right through the whole game. And oh, man, they I remember stop. sitting when I was playing for Australia on, on the bench, and 
um, they were just singing right through the kick. <laughs> you know, when you're meant to be quiet during yeah. the kick, yeah. the guy on the sidelines, you know, singing on the microphone and when we're sitting up, you know, singing the Australian National Anthem, they're singing it too. They're just, you know, they're just happy people that, you know, love their footy and, um, you know, get around both sides. So mm. it's, yeah, it's different. Usually a crowd only, only goes for one yeah. side, but they definitely support both. Yeah. Well, well, normally one of, one of the sayings goes like, Score some points, take the crowd out of it. Mm. We were six. I think we were sixteen nil up. Yeah, we thought you know, <laughs> it's not, help. it's it's not, not helping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, and then when Tonga started coming back, yeah. oh my oh, god, yeah. like the volume just yeah. was deafening. Like yeah. we were trying to like talk behind the post, yeah. be like, got to get this next set right. Like fucking, yeah. it just couldn't hear each other think. Yeah. It was insane. But people don't realize like you, you, the people always say, take the crowd just. Just block it out. You, you cannot. And no, once, you can't. And once that momentum is like on the opposition side, you can just feel it in the crowd behind it. You can like actually mm. feel the weight. You can. Yeah, and it's it's a funny feeling, but mm. yeah, it's probably something that I'll miss. You know, not yeah. being a part of that. Um, the Australian 2017 uh, World Cup victory, beating us in the final. Um, what do you remember from from that tour? And, and is that the the, the ultimate for you so far in your career um yeah it, it definitely it definitely is i think origin um you know probably just beats that but i that tournament was was probably i think we played you guys in in the first Melbourne, round and yeah. sort of won convincingly there and then i think we went on a bit of a run where we sort of um beat a few sides by a fair few points and probably weren't prepared to have such a physical and I think the game ended up six six nil. Six nil. Yeah, six nil at the time. I yeah. remember remember seeing you at the scrum one time. <laughs> On that night, you wouldn't remember. Oh, I was yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying something to you and because uh, I knew you were coming to the Dragons the year after, mm. but um, yeah, I don't think we were just prepared for the style of game. You know, we cruised into the final, um, and we knew it was going to be a tough game. We knew you guys mm. were going to turn up, but just. That style of footy was kind of origin like, where mm. you just. I think Clamour got me off the kickoff. Yeah. Like, you fuck. <laughs> like and the first kickoff of the yeah. game. And it's only going to, yeah. yeah. And it kind of felt a game like it's just going to take a moment in the game where yeah. it's going to just someone slipping over mm. or, you know, just a yeah. <laughs> ankle tap that oh, stops dude. a try, you know what I mean? And, um, yeah, it was a tough. Game. It was it was, it was a war like game. it, and yeah. players were into each other yeah. as well. It was getting yeah. it was getting feisty. Yeah. It was like it Personal. was very confrontational. Yeah, yeah. It was like f like yeah. it was a, it was really what Test match foot yeah. should all be it should yeah, be about. Game. And like you know, we all shook hands at the end of it, mm -hmm. but we were like, yeah. well, you know what? Really, you'd love to have played a three game series, yeah, and gone like, well, like can we can we do this again yeah. next week? Yeah. Which is now what they're eventually going to get, and obviously because that was in a World Cup final. And like say, to be fair, you forget that you've beaten us in round one. But we just felt like yeah. we, we were ready in that ankle tap, <laughs> like Dugues, your mate, yeah, Josh yeah, Dugan, Dugues, like for yeah. all the, whatever anyone ever says about Josh no. Dugan, yeah. he saved Australia a World Cup. Yeah, he'd turn opinion. up in big games, wouldn't he? Like in origin, in, in the Aussie team, like mm. he wouldn't play, so he'd always play good in in club footy but when it come to a big game you'd always he'd always stand up and probably looking like in the game you didn't you didn't think how big that was like yeah you stopped the try but when you look back on it and go well that could have cost us the game if you didn't, well, I if think you didn't do that if Watkins goes through yeah. um I remember I laid it off to Gaz I think anyway I can't really remember a lot of that game but mm -hmm. I watched it yeah, back yeah I think I laid it off to get Gaz to Watkins Walking and then the support coming on the inside, yeah. and I think we I back him to finish the break, and then it's six all because yeah. he's got support on the yeah. inside under yeah. the sticks, and then I, I don't know. What will I, I kind of fear figure that we had the momentum at that yeah. point if we score, yeah, but absolutely. I guess we'll never know. But never still, know. but yeah, one for the good guys. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. Yeah, <laughs> dickhead. Uh, <laughs> um, it was that year during the Dragons where we. Yeah. Um, became teammates. Obviously, we were living in the same suburb as well, mm -hmm. pretty much. Um, the, the 2018 Dragons year, mm -hmm. um, 
the stars just didn't align in the end. Yeah. The, we were absolutely flying. What What are your memories yeah. from that? Because you've been a part of this, yeah. this Dragons team um, for a number of seasons. In mm -hmm. fact, I think the year before. In fact, it was. It was the end of the 17 season. You guys really the same. Bull, <laughs> the last yeah. game of the year. Yeah. Bulldogs beat Dragons to make the Cowboys limp in yeah. to the finals and go actually go on. Yeah, I think they were on and, Mad Monday. I think their weekend. I, yeah, because we I played on a Sunday. conversation with someone. They said that they were potentially on Magic or oh, Magnetic Island at the time. When yeah. We, see, we, we should have smoked you guys and, you know, should have made ourselves. Yeah. You know, valuable it was a, for yeah, the, it was a, it was a yeah. Sunday Arvo game. Yeah. So it would have been the last game of the season. So, yeah. yeah. So we didn't pack anything. We'll, you know, get through the dogs here and we'll play some finals footy. And yeah, you guys come, come to play and um, yeah, beat us that, that year. Yeah, what, what can I can remember? I think it was that year in maybe 2018 where we'd start the year red hot. I'm mm. pretty sure that was like that. No, yeah, I mean, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Red hot and every year. So especially those two years where we'll probably after 10 rounds leading into origin, we'll, we'll sit in top of the table. And then both years we went through a, a bit of a lull and we're struggling to make the eight. And then I'm not too sure where we finished there. Um, we finished in, in 18. We finished seventh, but it was the right time for us to, yeah. to do something. Oh no, did we do it? Yeah. I think we did finish played Brisbane yeah. away yeah so we were only I think we were like two points off the top four there was yeah. four teams yeah in the top four I don't think mm -hmm. I think they I think maybe even points difference yeah it was it was a app it was log jam it was mm -hmm. an absolute log jam but we messed up a few games Remember yeah. we lost the para at home and we were just like our heads were falling yeah. off like yeah we had a bad run against para in my time at the Dragons but yeah I think we went on a great run at the start of the year and mm. went through that Another tough patch um, through the origin period and couldn't manage that for some reason. And well, we come we, good towards the back end. We had we had yourself, Vaughan, uh, DeBellant and Sims all mm -hmm. playing state of origin for yeah. us. So four forwards. Yeah. Um, so that was difficult to yeah. manage. But then we got to the back end of the season. Remember we lost Vaughan? Yeah. We lost Gaz. Gaz, in, in Tarek. The, we, we, did we lose Gaz in Brisbane when we when we won the grand, when we won the um, – the round one of the playoffs. I think he did yeah, go yeah. down in that yeah. game. Remember, he popped yeah. his shoulder, didn't he? Yeah. So we went up to, to Brisbane and we put a clinic on. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah against the Broncos. and From what I can remember yeah. anyway. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I was gone. Pretty much, yeah, carved them up. And then we got into the, I think, the South game and we were depleted. Yeah. I think we, we might have started with a few boys out. I think Gaz was out. Yeah, Gaz mm. was out. Gaz missed it. Um, Vaughn missed it. Yeah. Tarek might have got injured in that game. I'm not too he sure did. he played. Yeah, and I was, I was, th and I was we on were, a six day turn from yeah. a full blown knockout. Yeah, I was got yeah. like, cause yeah, yeah. Mm. And then I think we went. Did we go? We got three field, field goals. Yeah, three, three. Or four. Yeah, three field goals. Rick Brown's got three Reynolds. field goals. Yeah, yeah, and potentially could have went to you know a grand final if, if we were fit. Mm. Everyone was fit. You know, what I mean, probably a year that we we kind of missed, and then can't remember what happened the year after i think well yeah, yeah. things happened the, things year, happened after. the year, year after that didn't set us up for oh yes 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 success um, um and yeah that was probably yeah mm. our year that we we needed to yeah. do something with the side and i think we knew we had a good side at the mm. time you know boys playing in the form boys probably at their peak and mm. yeah we just sometimes you need you need to be fit you need to have all your players available yeah. and to do something then we just weren't yeah unlucky it wasn't just me that came to the club um that year we were joined by um some big money signings um jeremy Lattimore came um <laughs> was that the year he came yeah that yeah oh okay yeah, do you remember yeah. like because we we started getting that the bus together yeah um some great characters on that bus some great yeah. stories um but that was the yeah that was the year Jeremy came and do you remember he was off me to begin with yeah because yeah. of an alleged he met you brush like, yeah, yeah. in 2012 in a nightclub and, and he doesn't forget anything and he was just that. like yeah. oh no nah, I'm not not a, not a fan <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, he could hold a grudge can't he? oh <laughs> yeah 
uh, had, had you had much to do with them before? No, I, I don't think is I, it, I, I was, had. It's, yeah. it's funny how we've, you know, I sort of sort of built a pretty <laughs> funny mm. relationship. Um, you can say we're all three different people and how we're just sort of all, <laughs> all worked out and how we, you know, sort of bounced off each other. But I hadn't had anything to do with it. I'm glad you said that <laughs> you're not the old one out. And <laughs> I think I'm the only one. I just, I'm different to you guys, I think. And I'm gladly different to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're, yeah, you're in between, I think. And Can you say that? Do you reckon I'm in between? Yeah, I'm, yeah I reckon from the French, you, you, yeah. you're one end of the spectrum. Yeah. You're that, and I'm probably in the middle. Yeah, and I can float to quiet, yeah, to, yes. uh, to, to extreme. Yeah, I think so. And I think Jerry knows that too. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't remember meeting him or knowing too much about him. He'd been with the club in, I think, in 2012. Yeah. Because oh, uh, you, yeah, oh, you went there when he was no. first there. Yeah, right? I left. Oh, sorry. He left when I got there in 13. And he was not at the Sharks when you were at the Sharks? No, no, no. He went there after when I left. So, yeah, we sort of missed each other and then he made his way back to the Dragons in 17, was in, it? In yeah. eight, he joined in 18. 18 yeah. 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 And um, yeah, it's <laughs> we we did have a <laughs> great time. We had a fun year. Yeah, yeah. We we were playing good footy, but we had a, yeah. a lot of fun that yeah, year. Yeah. We were very connected, yeah. like very connected. And yeah, yeah. It's one thing I've noticed. You know, being a part of sides now is just you know how you know usually how connected you are off mm. the field. Usually, you know, transitions mm. on the field, and um, yeah, that year we were very connected, and mm. probably not so much when we sort of left the Dragons there at the end. Mm. Um, yeah, but that's a, another story. Yeah, we had Dufty on the bus as well, which <laughs> is we had a, we had a lot of fun we had, on the we bus. Had, we had some pa- it was person- yeah. there was some personality clashes of, yeah, on the bus. Yeah, definitely a lot of older guys, a lot of guys in the middle, and a lot of young boys too. Mm. So it was a it was a great dy- dynamic. I think there mm. might have been eight, ten of us that were mm. traveling from the Shire or you know Cogra down together, and it was good. It was great for. Tough rides there mm. during preseason, having a bit of a laugh and um, getting connected that way. Mm. Yeah, it was good you driving down, <laughs> needing this, <laughs> and that man to get the training every day. <laughs> what have you? You've probably been down there for at least six months and still not know how to get the training. Man, directional <laughs> sense is a is not good. so. You just close your eyes and just drive. Just go. Yeah. Just, no, I do need. You still I, bad I, here? I think the sat nav is the greatest invention yeah. of mankind. Like yeah. I still, I'd, I've come from Triple M here yeah. and I've done that journey like 30 times. I still put it in the nav. Yeah. I, I, I could back myself, but I don't want to mess it up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's all right. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The thing is when you're driving to Wollongong from Cronulla, there's probably three turns that mm. you need to know. I know. And you still couldn't get that. But you just gotta, you just, <laughs> I, I, I want clarity. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's only one, only one way. There's only yeah. one way. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of us. I'll yeah. tell you what I was going to buy on the way down here. What was that? I was going to buy you a hat. Why? <laughs> what do you mean, buy me a hat? I don't know if you can get a photo of and show the hat that you, you wore that day to, oh. <laughs> to training that oh, Oakland Raiders hat that, that went missing for some yeah. reason the next day. And never turned up again well, after that. What, what, I was, what I was trying to do is like do something a little bit different yeah. and turn <laughs> up in an Oakland Raiders hat and just got the absolute <laughs> piss shredded out of me. It's like, well, I didn't, yeah. I don't think it looked that bad. I thought it looked good. I don't it's just different because yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not yeah. a hat wear. I never yeah. really wear hats. And it was, wear. A, it was a, like a baseball hat, like mm. a fitted hat too. Yeah. And I've got a big head too. So, and it probably suits, suits me, but for a guy like you to wear, yeah, baseball hat, Oakland Raiders. What, what, we what? sort of like yeah, stick the, it yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> Got pissed for it, and then we asked you where it was, and you yeah. said, oh, I'm "Not wearing it, not wearing it with you guys ever again." <clears throat> what, 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 what difference does it make if it's Oakland Raiders? Is that like a call? Like a no, it's no, no, not at all. It's just uh, it was like a hat from what's a. Oh, can't even think of it now. It's like a straight peak. Yeah, it's a mm. straight peak hat. And well, there you wasn't. go. Well, I'll, you can have that hat. That behind. wouldn't fit me. That wouldn't fit see, me. Let's see if you can <laughs> fit it on your head. Does this fit you? Does what? it fit you? Um, it, if it's stretched out fully, yeah. Nah, I don't. You know, I've got a big head. Oh no, mine's massive. Yeah. 
If I get it right, turn <laughs> edge. Oh yeah. There you go. Hey. hey. <laughs> Looks good, <laughs> mate. With your head on it. Uh, mate, you can keep it. Thanks, mate. No, don't just put them out. Take it down. Yeah, I'll take it. You're not going to take <laughs> I'm not it. Not wearing out. that. Why? Why wouldn't you wear that? Go in and show all your mates at night with your head on it. Yeah. yeah. Be like, look at this mad hat yeah. I've got. Why don't you wear it? Because I don't suit caps, as you well know. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. We know that. Yeah. I was going to wear a hat, but yeah, I thought I better not. Yeah. Well, thanks for thinking of me. Yeah. But, like, or, or, but what's the point in telling someone, I was going to buy you a gift and then you didn't? Yeah. Like, just, why would you shit? It why just come you? across because I was driving down. I was just thinking of, there's plenty of stories that was probably for another time, but I just, for some reason, that story popped up in my head. Mm. And. I think I drove past maybe a hat shop and just thought, what if I stopped in there and tried to find Jim with that hat that he lost <laughs> and never wore it again? I didn't lose it. <laughs> it just got thrown away. Yeah. Um, no, they were they were some very good times. Yeah. Um, some good people on the bus. Benny Hunt was a yeah. good contributor. Jason <laughs> Knight, at times. Uh, Jason Nightingale. Yeah. Reece, a young Reese Robson as well. Robbo. Yeah. Peppers. Tried to <laughs> take credit for everything he's done. Yeah, yeah. We, Turned him into the player he was. I Dufty mean, was up and down. Yeah. He was he was hard work at times. Yeah. But looking back now, he's a character. Oh it yeah. was it was great to have and probably boys like to to pick on him a little bit, but um he was good value. Mm. Yeah. He remembered he played basketball all the time and boys would tell him not to play because if he lost, he took it into the gym and just be yeah sulking the whole time and Yeah, it was <laughs> He came in with big waves of big energy. Big waves, yeah. Yeah. He's like a smaller version of, of Latsy. Yeah. So. Like a, very, a kid. Very, <laughs> like a very, kid. He was like a kid. child, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like literally like a child. Yeah. Um, But <laughs> an amazing year. <coughs> uh, sorry. I'm trying to think, did anything else happen on the on the bus? You a few people on mute. A oh, few, we would. Um, Corey Norman. Oh yeah, Corey Norman, he came, yeah, he was a yeah. late addition um, yeah. in 19. Yeah. But just oh, on that, fin finishing 18, I thought, oh, well, we're, we're gonna be, mm -hmm. we're gonna be on again next year. Yeah. Um, and obviously an off-field incident happened. Yeah. Um, that's difficult to, to mm -hmm. talk about. Um, but how did you find that as a, as a leader trying to navigate us through that I, I did find it quite challenging yeah a, a little bit um well no not a little bit did yeah. I did find it challenging yeah I was probably a bit more confrontational and being like mm -hmm. well like let's make it us against everybody else yeah, yeah. um I probably thought we were being treated unfairly yeah um for, for a multitude of reasons obviously we had we were I, I was we oh sorry I was biased because it was our teammate mm -hmm. and this it, there was no winners in the situation, yeah. but I was trying to make it a little bit us against them. Yeah. I'm sure you remember that meeting with Brian Johnson that, <laughs> we, that we had. Yeah. And, um, yeah. How how did you find that? <laughs> Do you want to bring? <laughs> how did you find it? As a, uh, yeah. Um. Yeah. It was. It was tough. Mm. Like. Yeah, I thought it was. Um. You know, this this can't happen. Like, why? Mm. You know, what I mean, we'll. Selfishly, we're just like, no, well, this is our time to to shine. Like we've got the we've got the side to do it, and then from him to getting taken from us, yeah, with the rule being made up out of nowhere, and it was tough. And, yeah. Um, to be fair, looking back now, I probably struggled with it a little bit, and in terms of how I was gonna and yourself, like trying to get the boys around to just to buy in and just you know, do it for mm. us. And when we weren't getting the results that we wanted and um, I think Gaz ended up leaving the year Yeah, Gaz after. announced he was leaving. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. At and the end of 19. Selfishly, is like, why? Like, yeah. Why don't? Like, this is our time. And yeah. we thought the whole situation would, you know, unravel itself and, and be fine potentially for the back end of the year and the year after. And, you know, it was tough to just go into training and, you know, put your all into everything and just not get the results that you wanted to. And I look back now, like, how could I have been a better leader? Yeah. You know what I mean? Being a better leader and stop thinking selfishly, like, I'm doing this, I'm playing, 
you know, my heart out here, why aren't you, mm. you know, coming along with me and realising now that people think differently, people have different reasons why they play, people have a different motivator and just understanding that and just trying to, you know, put your arm around them mm. and go, hey, how do you think, yeah. how do you work, all right, we've got this goal that we want to do, this thing that we want to achieve and... Now me going from, you know, the Dragons to the Knights, I've been able to sort of learn a bit more and mm. look back and understand the kind of person that I was. And as much as I was, you know, playing good footy, I wasn't a great, great leader at the time. Yeah, I think it was difficult for us all to yeah. sort of attempt to navigate because it was so new. Mm -hmm. um, we, we felt it was unfair. Yeah. And we didn't know how. There's no playbook on how to to navigate that that situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then that really was like, I don't know if the the dragons. Well, they maybe recovery now under Coach Flanagan, but I yeah. think it took. It's taken a long time for them to recover. Um, 2020, when the season was postponed from COVID, we spent a fair bit of time training together as yeah. well. Um. What are your memories for, from that time? I, I, one thing that stands out for me, we used to train down at Gamia Oval. Yeah. You with your, used to bring your um, <laughs> little meter stick. Your, your meter stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me measuring out the, yeah. the 20, 40, 60s a little bit short. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I, I remember one session we did <clears throat> and I'd come off um, a call with um, the, the NRL yeah. that I think, the night before and the sort of indication was like i would not be going to be mm -hmm. coming back this year like things were yeah like looking bad and you've turned up to training with your big cheesy smile like we were allowed to <laughs> yeah. see each other yeah and i'm digesting this news i'm like I, we're, we're not coming back for yeah. this. like and you're flying out the gates <laughs> and i was just i, I was a bit off yeah because we would We'd be pretty similar in how, like, we'd train together. We'd pretty, you know, go after it. And, mm. um, on a similar, you're probably a bit more tapped than me, but in terms of fitness-wise, we'd sort of, you know, push, push each, each, other. Push each yeah. other along. I think it was the day when you were probably struggling a bit because <laughs> you had a lot of other things weighing you down at that day that I didn't, you know, potentially know mm. about. But and I, I was, I remember looking at it. It's like, yeah. I, can't, I can't fucking let him down. <laughs> yeah, I, can't, I don't want to bring his food down. Like, yeah. Fish were not coming back. <laughs> the season's over. It was, a, it was a bit of a weird time, but mm. a lot of memories too that we can probably take back. We had a, a lot of good times. We trained, yeah. we trained together a lot, and we, um, I don't know if we can say it now, like with COVID and all that kind of stuff, but we had some bent the rules. Yeah, we bent the rules a, a mm. little bit and um, had some good times that, mm. yeah. We had, a game good of, times there. we had a game of cards, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. plenty of poker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in yeah. the shed, which is which was great when we had an opportunity where we had to have two friends over, mm. I think it was at yeah. the time. And, um yeah, and that was the year that I think you might have decided to go to Oh, my head had gone. Yeah. We had yeah. plenty of conversations. I remember driving to and from training and then I think the season had started two games in and I was up in the air with going to to Newcastle and then you were asking me, are you going to hang around? And I was asked, why, why? Like, why were you? Because you didn't realise mm. that you were potentially leaving that year to, to go to St. Mm. Helens and I well, didn't know what, yeah. What, when we, we did all that training, come back, we'd lost the first two. Mm -hmm. We'd come back and I don't know if you remember this, we, we lost to the dogs at Parramatta Stadium, come back, if I'm, th if I'm correct. Or well, maybe it was it. Was it the Tigers the week after or something? Was it a? It was, I think it was dogs we lost to in the second game. Yeah. Well, so okay. I, I, it was two games that we probably should have won. Yeah. You know, leading into that year, it was. So we was lo like, and we lost the first. We actually played Penrith and we played really well. We just yeah. lost. Okay. Was it? And then we we the season broke and mm -hmm. then we came back, and it. Well, obviously, we spent that lot of time together. I, yeah. I could sort of feel I was getting close. Like, I was struggling to keep up at training. And one yeah. of the things I was pride of myself was 
Yeah. One was conditioning. Yeah. Obviously, then this, when then we started back, and I was almost questioning myself within the team mm -hmm. and um, the whole structure of the selection panel and all that. Was, yeah. Like it, 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 it we, was a we, bit of a wee time. We were a mess. We we were a basket case at that point, yeah. and there was. Yeah, I remember playing that game. We drove back, and I think I said to you, "Like I, I, I'm done. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm out. I'm yeah. packing in." I know it was the week before. It was the week before the break because I made was close to re-signing. Pretty much <laughs> was going to re-sign. Oh, was it? Was this the week before? Yeah, before we broke. I think we might have went for. Might have went for dinner. I think just me and you, maybe in Gaimi's at like Italian restaurant or something like mm. that. And that conversation came up. But I remember I was almost close to signing before the season had started with the Dragons and I might have had a conversation with you, Sammy, and one of our good friends, Greg, about, you know, I've got this opportunity to go to Newcastle. Mm. Like, what do I do? I think I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to make a decision there. And yeah. then and the decision was like, just give it, Give it a couple of weeks and just see what happens. There's no, there's no need to rush. And then after, when that COVID kind of happened, that's when I probably had an opportunity to think, and then that's when I made my decision. Yeah. So those conversations with you going overseas, I'm pretty sure happened pretty yeah. early as well. Yeah. It was a, it was a strange time. Like, yeah. And we both wanted to do well for the dragons, yeah. but I needed like, yeah. And my body was starting to get. Yeah. very close to the end of yeah. what I was able to give. Yeah. And you were looking for a new challenge. Was it, was it weird for you to, to, to leave the Dragons? Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah, because it was, um, yeah, I'd, I'd made my, made a name for myself, made my career there, um, given so much to the Dragons. I'd been there for, for eight years and, you know, captain the side a couple of times without Gareth and, um, Kim McGuinness being there and you know you at times um, and growing as a player and a person and like I said it was a funny time like a lot of off-field things that were just eating at me and um, I was bringing a bit of a burden back home which I you know at the time was, wasn't really great and you know, you try and leave your footy at the door, but at that time I was bringing the footy home and wasn't... Emu and eating emu and, Yeah, you could probably say just... <laughs> Yeah, ride the results yeah. um, throughout the week. And, um, yeah, it was a time for me to, yeah, that, that time the COVID break sort of gave me the, the answer that I needed mm -hmm. and the start of that year sort of, you know, was sort of like, yeah, okay, it's it's time for you to go and, you know, face another challenge and, you know, potentially grow as a player and it's probably, you know, one of the best decisions I've made. I know, I know what it's like to to leave family behind um, in, in terms of moving country, but you know, mm. I know you're only moving from. Well, you were living in the Shire at the time, playing for the Dragons, based in the Gonga. That's mm -hmm. a lot of. That's where your family were yeah. based. Yeah. But it went from, you know, you drive past the family home every yeah. every day, pretty much, yeah. and, and stop in there. You know, yeah. every couple of weeks, whatever. But then moving to Newcastle, it meant almost cutting ties. Yeah. That sorry, not cutting ties, but just just moving away out the comforts of yeah. of home as well, and yeah. just that ability to just pop in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Did that factor into your decision as well? Um. Yeah, I knew it was out of Sydney. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because Newcastle, it's on its own. If you say you are going to Brisbane, you are going to Newcastle is out of Sydney. Yeah. So, look, it's it's not as hard as moving away a whole country and moving mm. your whole life on your own. But, but it's not a day trip anymore. It's not it's a day a, trip. It's, an over, it's yeah. minimum, like from Newcastle to the gong, it's an overnight couple yeah. of days. Yeah. yeah. And at the time I didn't know how it was going to plan out, but, um, yeah, I just knew I needed to I needed to move and um, Newcastle was the, the ideal place. I wasn't going to go to a... A Sydney club. I needed to move, you know, elsewhere and, um, yeah, start a new life up there. And yeah, it's been great. Newcastle's been, like I said, I love my time. I love the club when I was at the Dragons and um, making the decision to become the Knights was was a was a good one for me. Uh, Fizz, one of the things that I love uh, about you when we played together was your 
uh, level of preparation. Um, some may call them superstitions, but you did have some some odd ones. Um, what one time I think coming down to train and you, you forgot your your certain pair of cycling shorts that you always <laughs> did captains running, and you'd only do captains running a pair of like cycling core shorts, no football shorts over the top. Yeah. yeah. Well, what was going on there? And why such a panic? Yeah, well, that's that's been a routine since I've had, since I debuted. So at, at the Sharks at the time, it was compulsory for the players to wear long skins. And if you didn't, you got you got a hefty fine. Sorry, long skins? Long, long, long BSC, like tights. You'd have to wear it captain's run. So you know how you usually wear it? when you go traveling and yeah. things like that. Well, you'd have to wear it for captain's run. Okay. Where Short, you wear, where you wear shorts, pants yeah. and top. Well, that, that was up to you. It was just extra washing if you wore shorts, so. Oh, no, no, but I mean, like, you'd wear the, the tight skin, the, the compression garment on your legs and your arms? Well, at the time, no, no, no. So at the time, you had to wear long compression skins or skins of some sort. But at the time, I didn't have any long skins. And the only thing that I had were bike, were bike tights, so that's what I wore, and I didn't get, in, I didn't get fined for it, so I wasn't going to pay a hefty fine with that, no money. That's how it, was, and that's that's how how it started. started. Yeah, yeah, and that's how it and started. And then you just kept so. wearing those bike pants, and then just, yeah, just kept wearing it ever since. That's Similar to my black boots. That's the only other. G- re- much yeah. respect the black yeah. boot. Like that is. Like that's a respect thing because I was a black boot wearer myself. Yeah, yeah. You had some other weird ones like the gym because you were always difficult to get away from captain's run. Yeah. You were always doing something. Doing, <clears throat> doing weights or something. Before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weights before the game. Yeah, I always found that before, strange yeah, yeah. the day before. Yeah. And would always go for a, a coffee and a treat, which mm. was probably different for everyone. Everyone likes their little treat before a game, probably the night before, but we still have for a coffee and would venture off to a different... Different cafes, cafes and yeah. test out the caramel slice. You'd get one, I'd get one, which is really and share it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You got yeah, well, weird man, story. How good's that? You, yeah, you yeah, get a treat, yeah. I get a treat. Yeah. Don't get the same. Let's get one each. Yeah. Split them, then we get the best yeah. of both worlds. Yeah. You, probably, did you have a few other weird? Well, there's probably some. But you did have some. I'm sure you had some other yeah. weird routine stuff or superstitions. Did you have, have, have anything on game day? Um. <laughs> Probably not that I'm going to bring up, but no, I don't think there's... What, t- did, what did you do? No, I don't, I don't think I did. Well, I do you now? Nah, I'm pretty relaxed now. Um, don't even listen to music too much. Like, I think that's a thing for everyone mm. that they in the zone, listen to music. Just on, you're just on mute. I'm just mute. Just, just put yourself on yeah, mute. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah, take yourself off. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Talk about game day, it's probably... Listeners don't know that you're a very different person. Obviously, yeah. you have to be, but one extreme to the other, which is something that I I enjoyed watching you <laughs> just come into a, a whole different person on mm. on game day. And yeah, much respect. I can't I can't change that much where you can. That's a good thing. Like, that's mm. a that's a great thing. It's for, multiple personality yeah, disorder. Very, yeah, like basically completely different people. <laughs> 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 where I'm probably the a little mm. bit similar and. Yeah, so There's obviously more, a different, you're different sta- other side. You're stable. I'm, I'm stable. I can, mm. I can flick a switch, but you go from black to white. Mm. And that's very different. Mm. But it was great to, because I had no one else like you, like <laughs> I had played with before. But yeah, it was good. Mm. <laughs> the time Jerry, and I know one thing you're thinking of is the time where that idiot Latimore took my smell and sold to my <laughs> boss. Yeah, I was not happy that not on that was it, not uh, on game day, not, brother. Not on game day, brother. Yes, yeah. and it's funny how we just pick up on, you know, be having a conversation about anything, and then if it was a bad story or you said something in the wrong way, you just hold it and then just go to the next person and tell them, hey, this is what Gemma said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Talking a list voice like Latte. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, um, Oh. Mate, the the future. What's um, what's gonna gonna happen with you? You've got next year at the Knights, and then yeah. a year in your favour. Um, you think that'll be it? Yeah, I'm I'm not too sure. Mm. Um, yeah, I'd love to be playing for for as long mm. as I can. I think 32 at the 32 now. So 
Um, hopefully got a couple more years left in me, but um, I'm enjoying my footy at, yeah. at the time. And I think once, if unless my body breaks down and I can't possibly go anymore or the mind is just not in it, um, I think I, I love to compete. I love to train hard and that's a part of the game that I've always... Um, you know, wanted to work hard is probably yeah. what I've built my game off for, for a long time. And once I don't have the urge to just keep keep wanting to compete, keep wanting to fight, keep wanting to turn up, it's probably the day that mm. I call it. So, um, yeah, at the time it's, you know, I'm all in at the nights. And like I said, I've, this is kind of a reason why I sort of just want to solely, solely focus on, on the nights at the moment and put the international stuff on the mm. side is... Um, it's because it's probably what I need this well, time of year. Yeah, you, you're obviously very competitive. Um, and, and I guess you say you're solely so focused on the nights. That's a, a football side of things. But yeah. you also have a, a fashion business as well, don't you? Fashion business. <laughs> well, what, what would you call it? Yeah, it's a... It's a fashion business. <laughs> it's, just, it's just funny coming from you, that's all. What, what, <laughs> what's funny about it? Because you know a lot about fashion, that's why. <laughs> I don't know too much, but yeah. But well, I'm just it's just funny. <laughs> For people that know you, you just you probably got two types of shades of colours in, in your wardrobe and because I know what works, yeah. And also <laughs> this is like how like um very dem in demand people mm -hmm. like so Obama only had two suits because he's got so many decisions to make, he can't get bogged down in yeah. like Making oh, what am I going to wear today? I'm just like, it's either this shade of blue yeah. or this shade of grey. Boom. Yeah, there like, go. there you go. That's great. And because I've got so many decisions to make, and it also looks great on me as well. So <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, that, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you, you have a, a, yeah, a fashion yeah. business. Me and Sammy, um, my wife, have a yeah, streetwear brand that we you know, started off, I think, about four years ago now. Um, solely probably for our kids. Um Tried to find well, you sell to adults, so it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but that's how it started. Oh right, it yeah. started off as a, a kids, a boys' kids wear label. We couldn't find anything for for the kids, uh, apart from dinosaurs and colourful kind you of clothes. You couldn't find any clothes for the kids. Not good stuff like ours. Not good stuff. Yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Not quality stuff. Yeah. Okay. And then eventually, yeah, we've built into a brand not only for kids but for unisex and, and big for adults, kids, for big guys like you. Yeah. A bit of colour, a bit of. Yeah, bit but it's a bit out there for me. I it's do, I, I do there, own a, an East Axe hoodie. Mm -hmm. um, bit, bit, bit big, bit big. <laughs> you know, but you, I, mean, you I, like, you I, like I, your, I know you like your shirt. We're, we're a bit, we like to have our things a little bit oversized. But I know you yeah. like your shirts nice and snug. But I, I can, I can move with the trends. Yeah, or oh, I can be a trendsetter. <laughs> trendsetter. So you know, <laughs> you haven't I, been setting trends for a while, mate. Come on, mate. <laughs> to be honest. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's it's going good. It's yeah, it's um, something that. You know, hopefully, fall back on uh, in the future, and mm. it's a yeah, it's a, a great little little business at the moment. Yeah, do you enjoy that side, like having something else to uh, put your attention towards? Obviously, you've got a, a young family mm -hmm. as well, three kids. That's mm -hmm. be obviously incredibly taxing and demanding, but yeah. also having something like like a business because you're fundamentally yeah. a business owner, right? It's just yeah. you and Sammy own the business. Yep. You're not partners with anybody no. else. So yeah, it's it's great, and it's. It, it takes you away from footy, but it's also um, something that you can that you like to see grow. Um, it's kind of like a, a footy side. You mm. you put your work in the footy side, and then to see the the side do well and, and progress, and you know perform every week. It's kind of like us in in terms of when we do collection, do drops. We started off, I think, with a collection of you know say ten grand, ten grand at the time, and then being able to double that year mm. after year and just slowly progress and see it grow. It's it's kind of like kids. <laughs> it, it, it kind of is. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, it, you it, put work yeah. into something yeah. um, that's so small at the time and then um, gradually, month after month, year after year, it just yeah it keeps growing. It's a bit like the buy round. I mean, like the buy, yeah, it th is. thankfully I've got 
Charlie and Tony yeah. to help me out because otherwise we'd be screwed. Well, you're, you're I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be recording it into, a, into an <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> These two are like, uh, yeah. no, we're going to yeah. get cameras and stuff and we're going to get proper mics. I was like, really? Can we just do <laughs> just it on our phone? <laughs> just hold it up here and, and talk. Like, it. Mm, it doesn't really work like that, yeah. James. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. you'd understand. So. Yeah. But I, yeah. I, I lean onto people with expertise. I'm thinking yeah. maybe you could lean on me for a bit of design. Yeah. You know? Next next time we we're picking out colors and fabrics that we want. Yeah, for... can you do something that's su more suitable for gingers? Because I feel yeah. you've said there, there's not much in the market for kids. I think bollocks because <laughs> I've been. F I know there's loads of clothes for kids. <laughs> there's not many clothes for gingers. For gingers, yeah. So well, there is a lot of greys, and I think we. All right, next time we we drop a hoodie or something, we'll make sure it's it's a, yeah. a type of grey. Oh, we we've done it for kids, but not for adults. Yeah, if, do some, if you can do some grey stuff for for adults, yeah. that'd be. A, a and maybe yeah, a couple sizes down for mm. you. So, uh, and maybe nice a, and maybe a discount code <laughs> yeah. as well would be would be very handy. We'll tell Taryn to, to let yeah. us know. And yeah, yeah, I yeah, will. Yeah, because yeah, my, my my wife did buy me yeah. a hoodie, and she's bought some other clothes yeah. from there as well, which you know, <laughs> not overly happy about because the, the, it's, 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 it's design. <laughs> it's design. And then the little notes you write in the packaging yeah. is a bit bit. I think it's a bit. No good. Unprofessional. Unprofessional. Yeah. It's only for Taryn. Yeah. It's not for you to see. Well, so yeah. every time Taryn yeah. makes a makes a purchase and I'm doing the orders, I like mm. to write a little note to Taryn mm. to, yeah. to see how the kids are going, hope they're going well and yeah, a little mm. little message about you. So yeah. I think she appreciates yeah. it. Well look the finer details that you, yeah, it's yeah. the yeah, it's those things that you know, you you've got a repeat customer yeah. there because there she's just hanging up for a, a note from you. Um <laughs> Mate, well, one of the things you, you, you do like your, your clothes um, and one of my <laughs> favourite memories is you with your, uh, well, how do you pronounce the shoe name? Balenciaga, as you call it, was it? <laughs> Balenciaga? Balenci Balenciaga shoes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you've got these very expensive <sighs> pair of shoes on um, and... You were going to tell me. I was going <laughs> to tell my mum. I was threatening you with telling <laughs> Oh, man, um, sweat. Because how, how much were they? Yeah, they're about 1,200, I think, they were <laughs> when I got them. And yeah, I think um, Gemma couldn't understand, like, why would you buy those kind of shoes? And I, it yeah, blows it's still, my mind. It still baffles me. Like, I don't, I'm, don't say I don't I buy expensive things, but it's, mm. it lasts forever. You know, it doesn't last forever, but no, 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 I still they, have him. Yeah, still, I still have him. Yeah. I've had him for, for years. And I remember when he found out, he's like, I'm going to tell your mum. I said, please don't, please don't tell my mum how much I are. I think because she would shoot me. Yeah, I think uh, I remember being in the house. As I remember, I think yeah. I said to you, oh, they're nice. They're, nice. Yeah. they're really nice shoes, aren't they? Yeah. And your mum <laughs> just is like, oh. Yeah, 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 not knowing how much it actually costs. Probably the yeah. Yeah, most expensive thing that I've got. Not now, but like at the time. Oh. No, no, oh, no. Well, oh, well, I've got a car. I've got a car, so that's, no, mate, that's more yeah. expensive. You You'd expect mean? to pay that for a car. Yeah, but oh, actually, no, you don't. I just saw you come in your your yeah, knee, 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 knee. Knee. <laughs> <laughs> No, you don't. Have, you don't have a car because when I called you to see where you were, yeah, you, yeah, I'm yeah. just right behind you, and this yeah. is like basically walking yeah. advertisement for Advertise, Tyson Brazil and the Newcastle Knights. Yeah, as much as I love the Knights, it is. Um, you do get noticed so a little bit with the signage on the side, so. Mm. Yeah, so you just spend all your yeah, free car and well, you, the money free, that you would spend now, on a so. car you spend on shoes yeah yeah mm. well people like to to spend money on different things they like to gamble they like to go out and spend money on if you're gonna gamble for a drink gamble with lab brokes you know, <laughs> if you're drink, too. drink with whoever you want yeah um but yeah that was a purchase at the time that you know i just wanted these things and because mm. i could get it and didn't have any other responsibilities of kids and mortgages at the time i just bought it so yeah so if there are any listeners of the podcast that live um in the Wollongong community that are connected to the Fazels, um <laughs> if you'd like to blackmail tyson uh to the tune of about 1500 <laughs> uh please do so yeah. um it, it does yeah, make me yeah. I, I i was like bursting yeah bursting not to just well i did one little subtle jab but yeah. i was I, it was it, mm -hmm. the ability to refrain from putting you in that situation because yeah. I could 
I, I can tell even now how much it. <laughs> I can't yeah, remember. Yeah. I'm just just thinking about that mm. story and remembering the time when you said, "I'm going to tell your mum." Like, don't don't tell her. I don't know. We give you full editorial control of this show, but yeah, we're, yeah, we're going to keep this in. This yeah, is <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> have, you, have you got any other expensive items? No, nah, not too much. No, not that I'll tell you. No, <laughs> no. no. Sometimes it's best. Just a grey shirt yeah. and some grey shorts. Yeah. Tight, like medium to tight yeah. greyish shirt. Bit of spray painted on. Yeah, yeah. Jeans, Chelsea boots. Bang. You've been working out. Been trying, mate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you not know? I did. I, did you not watch the six o'clock news? I did, did a marathon. <laughs> did a marathon. How's <laughs> your hip? <laughs> it's actually all right. It was, in, a, it was in all sorts, but yeah. yeah. yeah Jerry got you through your, your Hydrox little. The Hydro. Is it Hi, high, high rocks? It's, oh, high yeah, rocks. Sorry, yeah. it's a new thing, is it now? Yeah, yeah. High rocks. Sorry. You, you'll figure Hydrox. It, <laughs> Hydrox. Yeah. You'll figure it out when you finish yeah, playing. Yeah. I, reckon yeah, I, you'd li- I reckon you'd like the High Rocks. Yeah, I think I would. Training with Jerry I've was seen, good yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, Frizz, we'll get on to the four questions for each and every guest that we do. Mm-hmm. Um, so first off, a dream spine, a one, six, seven, nine. Um, well, probably the, the Aussie team that I played, played with the, the spine of Cameron Smith, um, Jonathan Thurston, Cooper Cronk and Billy Slater. It's you know, probably a reason why they've gone through a bit of a dynasty mm. there and, um, for, for Queensland for such a long time. And as pretty much a kid coming into an Aussie side with those guys around you, you can understand why that was so, you know, lethal and why they're, they're mm. legends of the game. It's just, I think I didn't speak a word, you know, when I was playing in the back row at the time and just... So you just bad. basically <laughs> just, exactly, just 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 exactly like you were. When <laughs> just we slot in and just do as you're told. And, um, you know, as a back row now, you... You count numbers. You're moving the line in, in defensively, and then you're you're talking to your half and what plays you can see in front of you. Where at the time you just just zip your mouth and just do your job. They'll tell you where to be, mm. um, you know what to do, and you know they do the rest. They just pick the option, you know, pretty much the right time nine nine times out of ten. So yeah, fair play. Um, if football didn't exist, what do you think you would have done? I would have been. Um, an electrician. So at the time, um, I was kind of trying to make it in in footy. Um, coming through high school and things just weren't planning out. I wasn't making any any rep sides in in footy and got to year twelve and got the opportunity to to be a to be a sparker or do a, a electrician apprenticeship. Don't know how good I would have been at it or how long it would have lasted, but um, yeah, it was pretty much ready to to finish school and um and become a yeah electrician but mm. you know parents sort of saw like that i you know was trying to do everything i can to to make it in footy and just said just have a crack just yeah stay out just stay in school you know give um school oh, boys, you were gonna leave leave school yeah yeah pretty much had a apprenticeship there ready to go which would have meant the end of the footy. end of school um but then made. you still could have played footy i at, would have just played club footy yeah at the time so at the time um school boys was just around the corner and um parents were just like just have a crack and see if you can make it through the school system because i wasn't making it outside of footy mm. so like through your your illawarra your junior reps any kind of that footy so the only other avenue was through school and that's why I kind of pursued the rugby side because league but, wasn't – Yeah. Yeah, because league wasn't really happening for me and you could almost walk into a rep side in, in Wollongong for rugby because not many people played it but um, there was an opportunity there to um, potentially go through the schoolboy system and, yeah, thankfully I, I stayed in school because that's where it, it sort of all happened in that one year, year 12. Did did rugby ever nearly eventuate for you? Because were, were Welsh rugby union in, at some point? I think there was whispers around um, around Wales at a time when I was playing NRL footy at the, at the you ever, time. Did you ever speak to them? I or? didn't really sort of venture down that down that path. And rugby was sort of an option there when I was at the back end of the Dragons to to go to rugby. But with who like? Just to go overseas, oh, if you, I like wanted to, Japan? yeah, yeah. Or, if I wanted to go at the time. Yeah. Um, I was having conversations with my brother around potentially going overseas, but it didn't 
I didn't really want to have a look at that. Yeah. That side of things, mostly because I felt like I had still a lot to give in, wanted to achieve yeah. a lot more things in, in league. So the idea was there, but in terms of like actually chasing that opportunity, it never mm. really, really crossed my mind. But yeah, back to your question, uh, electrician. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Didn't you do a building course? As yeah, well? yeah, yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you ever? Did you finish that? No, <laughs> got through two or one and a half years, nearly two years of that um, when I was at the Dragons. Yeah. yeah, and then went to Newcastle and sort of <laughs> put that on. Kids come along. Yeah, <laughs> no time. And yeah, fair you enough. can always make time for it, but yeah, I just um, yeah didn't mm. fully finish that. That's all right, mate. You're not the. F- <laughs> um, uh, the most interesting person that you've met along the way? <laughs> oh, you'd have to say our, our mate Latsy, he's, he's one of a kind, isn't he? Mm. He's, um, as much as we, we like to take the piss out of him and just have a lot of laughs and stories, he does bring a lot of enjoyment mm. um, to, your, to your life and whether he's down, you can have a laugh about it and whether he's up, he can, he can bring you up with him. Um, and just the character that he is, he's uh, he's one in a million, definitely is, and mm. he's a very loyal friend. If he's mm. if he's on your side, and oh. if, he, if he likes you, so mm. you got to keep um, him on side. You got to keep mm. him on side, but he's um, he's definitely a a good character that yeah. you know every side, every team needs. Mm. And as much as he, you know, he probably takes a piss out of himself for you know playing on the bench, and it's. You know, you you always need a person like that within within the team, whether they're playing or whether was, it's a young guy a that you can player, absolutely. Right? Yeah. And people don't give him too much credit for. But yeah, he's he can definitely bring the morale mm. around the team when you when you need it. So he was um, he was great value. Mm. D- did you know he did a boxing match? <laughs> <laughs> did, he tell, did he tell him about that? Oh mate, we we know everything that he's mm. that he's up to, and yeah. He obviously wanted a boxing match there with someone else. We've wanted our yeah. teammates there for a bit. Did you did you know there was much beef beef between Latsy and Vaughn? Because I was abl- I, I was yeah, totally I oblivious to it. I think he just. I don't think there was. I don't know. I think you can just, come after me. Yeah, if someone's gonna come after him or something of some sort, he'd mm. just go, "Yeah, I want you." <laughs> so, yeah, like one little know. thing could yeah, happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just give him a reason to yeah come after you. And I don't think he's got anything personal there, but. As soon as he said, "Come on, let's go," he's like, oh, "Come on!" Yeah, he, he actually, yeah, he yeah. Didn't I know. I wanted fight. to come. I think it was the last game of our. We had to beat the Dolphins to make it that weekend. That's yes, when he had his fight. It was, yeah. So I wanted to come down to, to watch. His yeah, fight, it was the Saturday bef- before Saturday before the sun, yeah. your Sunday game. Yeah, I really wanted to come and watch it, but it was good mm. to see him, you know, win. Mm. <laughs> he, he, he was. Like, it was a good fight, yeah. was it? Yeah, he actually yeah. did all right. Yeah, I was really proud of him. To yeah. be fair. Because he like, has been working hard, I know, mate, behind the scenes. So. Oh, mate, mate, yeah. And, yeah. like, obviously we, we we know Jerry and, like, to see him so dedicated yeah. to something. Yeah. It was it was a bit odd. Yeah. But, it's yeah. good to see. Yeah, it was good to see. Yeah. And good to have, like, a little focus thing for him. Yeah, I think he's going to try and Is he going again? again? Apparently, like, awesome. apparently, like, <laughs> he goes, like, oh, oh, bra, oh, bra, bra. Bra. <laughs> I've been, yes. I've been calling George Rose. I mean, oh, those Rose brothers, no <laughs> limit. I'm like, mate, you do realise that you, they're like multi-million yeah. dollar deals they're broker and they've got you like hammering them on Instagram requesting <laughs> a fight. I'm like, like, but obviously uh, for him, it's his... It's yeah, like, it's his, yeah. Yeah, it's, well, it is Jerry's world. Yeah, we all just live in it. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I'm like, uh, I reckon they've probably got things going yeah, on with they got Tim Zoo. Tim and, Zoo yeah, and, you know, uh, like, fighting overseas. Yeah. And, Probably a bit focused on that. Yeah. <laughs> Rather than <laughs> it's probably gonna be a footy fight, you know, that yeah. they probably put on the cards down the track. So just just wait for that. He wants to be undercard of Tim Zoo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, the, yeah he, the Zoo Jerry's like, well, what's the pay-per-view split yeah. gonna be like for this fight <laughs> that I'm doing? George, come on. What what, what, uh, what deal can we broke yeah. But yeah. Uh, no, I, I I think that's right. It, it yeah. is a very interesting human being. Uh final question for his uh, a sliding doors moment that you think about. Um, like maybe the alternative happening. Yeah, well, I probably just spoke about it. Yeah, just um, sticking with staying in school. Mm. Um, yeah, not not chasing that. <laughs> I guess it was an easy fix at the time, just to get a job, get a 
get an apprenticeship, but you know, parents believed in me, and, and mm. what I, even though I probably didn't believe myself that I was any good enough to make it, and they probably seen how dedicated I was away from the training paddock and wanted to mm. want to be better and um, just listen to them, them for once and just sticking at it, and then it it sort of all just planned out for me, and mm. you know that year I ended up going from not doing anything to making schoolboys um, in rugby and then getting picked up for under 20s at the Sharks at the end of that um, at the end of that tournament so yeah and I've gone mm. there and yeah the rest is the rest is history mm. it's funny that some people have that that real internal drive yeah and then some people just need someone to believe in them yeah and give them a little bit of a nudge yeah. and like I, I guess for, for, for you and your unique set of circumstances yeah. for you you probably just like you say, needed when you've got that self doubt, mm -hmm. like, uh, mm -hmm. and then just two people who you obviously love dearly to be like, no, just, yeah, just that little nudge of support, it's, it can be huge. Yeah, um, and we we probably do that. You know, we need to do that with our kids. Mm. You know, growing up and you do it with teammates that are probably struggling with form or, or some sort. You know, that, you know it's happened to me, and you know that it probably you know could help someone else too in terms of. You know, just say, come on, let's go. Yeah. You, you got it, mate. It's it's probably good things going to happen at the end of this. It's not going to last forever. And, um, yeah, I'm thankful that, you know, I, I stuck it out and it's all planned out for me. Sweet. All good, Frizz. Yeah, well, that'll, uh, that'll wrap us up. Um, good chat. <laughs> good chat. Um, you hang around the Shire or yeah. you're going you're gonna to head straight back to Newcastle? I'm just going to cruise, mate. And if you got time for me, I'll... Have a coffee with it and hang out for a bit if you want. Let's go for you a beer. Should we go for a beer instead? <laughs> we'll go for a beer. There's a yeah. little pub around the corner. We've got time. Yeah, off season, so. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Old times. This is, this is, stories. This is where it all goes wrong. <laughs> uh, we'll have a, a catch up session about mm. what happened after the, the podcast. All right. Sounds good. Thanks for joining us, mate. Appreciate it.